Bonjour mes amis, hi guys, this is another one for the sake of fanboys. This is the SARS 005 S A R Z or S A R Z. Cool watch is discontinued. I think this one came out a few years ago. It's a JDM Japanese domestic model. And uh, I'm really stunned. I found it by chance on eBay through a search. And you can still find a few of these around. They're quite uncommon. So if you wear one of these, you're really going to stand out. It's not your usual, usual small Seiko 5. Uh, this one is a 41 millimeters. As you can see, it has a decent size bezel and a chapter ring. So the dial itself is not too big. So it's not going to wear too large. Although the lug to lug width is uh, is fairly fairly long but as you can see here the lugs angle uh, in a rounded way a lot so it really hugs the wrist unlike pretty much unlike any watch that i have so the watch as you can see has a sporty team and i think it was modeled after the rev counter of a motorbike Indeed, from 0 to uh, 20 here, you have some sort of uh, red line the shifting uh, for shifting. In this case, it's white, uh, but you know what I mean. Very cool detail here in the bezel between those very uh, interesting rivets. Here you have some sort of, uh, I don't know, some grainy, grainy texture, slightly shiny within the bezel there at four four spots there it's very very interesting and unusual you also have a cool crown guard kind of reminiscent of the IWC watches the lugs here have that nice rounded shape brushed on the uh, on the top here and polished on the sides very reminiscent of uh, the Omega uh, case shapes certainly the Speedmaster Moon watch which is a 42 millimeter watch and uh, you can really compare those two they have uh, they're fairly similar in their size and in the shape of those lugs and the uh, and the case overall now back to the this cool dial a lot of things are uh, going on although it doesn't look too clustered you have the Seiko 5 sports logo which on this watch looks very good. Actually here in this uh, artificial light, you, the watch looks a bit gray on the dial, but in person it's very black. So all the details on the dial really pop. So at the bottom you have automatic 24 joules written discreetly. I really like the hands here, all with a triangle uh, sort of shape. It probably has the coolest seconds hand uh, I've ever seen with this long triangular skeleton shape on the back end and a diamond towards the, the front. So it, it plays uh, really well with the triangular shapes uh, with some 3D effect of the hour and minute hands. You can see that there is loom on those. So the second hand is a very bright white, but a peep of loom inside and the rest of the loom on the applied hour markers and on the hour minute hands are more of a, a grayish color. So it's a nice little contrast there. Now those applied markers um, are slightly, slightly raised. They play with the lights. The, the coolest one is obviously the 12 o'clock uh, one that has this uh, funky, funky shape with the, with the triangle uh, reversed on top. And so at night, the loom, which is always very potent with a Seiko, uh, is quite interesting because you can uh, immediately um, find uh, your orientation with this uh, funky 12 o'clock our marker. Now the chapter ring is also a high feature of this watch. 
It is slightly angled, I would say around 15 degree. I like the font used on it. Uh, it's um, a bit more technical than the usual rounded fonts you find on watches and uh, ties in well with this uh, uh, motorcycle theme uh, of the watch. As I mentioned, from 0 to 20, you have this extra line. Sort of gives some uh, urgency to, to the watch. Uh, a cool little, little feature there. As you can see here, we have a framed day date window. And you can see here a kanji is because the alternate date here, uh, alternate uh, language here, is uh, Japanese. The choice being between Japanese and uh, English. I'll pull the crown and you can see when I rotate down. Oh, sorry, that's for changing the, the, the date. And if I rotate up, it's going to change the day. English, Tuesday, Kayobi, Wednesday, Suiyobi, Thursday, Mokuyobi, Kinyobi, Doyobi, Sunday in red, exactly the same red as the sports. So Sunday is really a happy day on this watch. And yes, you have the Nichiobi kanji. Very cool, very cool touch there. Let's leave it there, so it's, it's so nice. So that's at the second position on the crown, and when you put it all the way, what happens? Oh, the second stopped. Yeah, although this is a Seiko 5, it is not running the uh, 7S26 uh, caliber. This is the 4R35, which you find in uh, more expensive uh, watches. This watch is a JDM, so as I said, so it retails around uh, 23,000, well exactly at 23,000 yen, and now you can find it around 150 bucks, which is a fantastic price for this uh, for this watch. And you have so this great caliber for R36 with a dated complication, hacking, hand winding, and uh, I've known this uh, caliber to be really accurate uh, out of the box, like within a second, day in day out. So I think we we've gone through uh, everything here. Uh, there is no signing on the crown, uh, which is, is okay because uh, the sides are, are all polished, so you have the whole uh, continuity uh, kept here, uh, all in a, in a great polishing. As you can see here, the, the bracelet really dives into the, the watch, it sinks into it as it does on uh, Omega watches. The bracelet has a satin finish. Very masculine. I like that. You know, you don't, you won't get fingerprints all over. You only have the uh, this, the uh, polishing on the sides. Standard uh, issue clasp, but no issue with, with those. You know, I've had the same on uh, other watches, and they last for years. No, no problem here. Yeah, it's a bit light. It's slightly uh, jingly, jangly, but really no. No problem there. The watch itself has quite some uh, some some heft, you know. It's not the, the lightest of watches. Obviously, it's 41 millimeters, but it's not a heavy watch, so it's very comfortable. What I like here is that the bracelet, as you can see, you you can really wear it very very tight to to your to your skin, and the lugs actually stick out uh, a little bit uh, when you look at it uh, from this this angle. So on the wrist, the watch will wear very tight. And I've removed the four links for my rather slim wrist. And as you can see, I can wear it with style and confidence <laughs> as a, someone who speaks much better than I do about watches uh, would say. Uh, let's have a quick look at the, uh, the movement uh, behind. I wouldn't call it the star of the show, uh, but for an entry movement, it's uh, it's very competent. And you have a slightly skeletonized uh, rotor and some brushing on the movement uh, itself, which is, which is quite nice, you know, at this uh, at this price point. That movement will serve you for for years, and it won't cost a fortune to to replace. And you could all together just get another cheap Seiko if you love this watch here and just uh, dump another movement in it 
uh, if this one happened to, to fail because you forgot to service it at some point. So obviously, yeah, display case back, you have Harlex crystal there, Harlex, Harlex crystal here. 100 meters of water resistance, which is really good for a non-screwed down crown. The crystal on the top is very, very flat. And you can see it sticks out a little bit, which could probably att attract a bit of dust and uh, possibly just uh, get stuck here and there. But overall, the watch uh, sits very flat on the wrist, so you can wear it with a tight cuff like the one I have today. And uh, if you wear a white shirt, this uh, white seconds hand will really pop and look very, very good. So there you go, that's a bit everything I had to say about the watch. Uh, let me know what you think uh, about this one in the comments. Uh, it's not very well known, I don't think I've ever seen uh, a review of this watch before, but I find it really impressive compared to the current lineup of uh, Seiko watches or even with the previous uh, releases. I'm really impressed by the quality of this uh, domestic model. You know, they always keep, as you know, the best of for, for themselves in Japan and, uh, well, they're, they're right. Uh, I want to keep this one for myself, most definitely. Those rivets around uh, the dial are really, really cool. And everything is really well aligned as well, you know. This watch really pops in person, uh, even better than I can possibly uh, show you on the video or uh, on, the, on the pictures. So I would really not hesitate uh, picking one of these up. So there you go, guys. Let me know what you think about this. Share the video with your friends who like Seiko watches as well. And I'll speak to you in the next one. Take care.